Hey guys, welcome to DevTake Finance and this video is about two methods to evaluate risk that is the standard deviation and the beta. So we were going through the corporate finance lessons where we were looking at the risk and return measures and we talked about how to calculate the return out of the investment which we have made and in this video we will talk about the risk involved, how to calculate the risk involved in any asset. So starting with the standard deviation, standard deviation is used to quantify the amount of variation or dispersion in the returns from the asset. So any asset in which you are investing, there is some sort of risk involved. So if you are expecting a return out of 16% and you are getting a standard deviation of 2%, so that 2% is indicating the risk it means that your return which you are expecting could go lower by 2%. So that is the deviation, that is the dispersion or we can say the it is indicating the volatility, the change which can because of the change there is a risk involved. Standard deviation is actually the square root of variance. We have studied these concepts in statistics as well. So where the standard deviation was actually the square root of variance. We are using the same concept but in financial terms where standard deviation is representing the risk involved in asset. And the formula for standard deviation is the variance divided by the summation of the variance divided by the n minus 1 that is number of observations minus 1. And this is because we are taking a sample size in study considerations that was we are deducting one from the number of observation. Talking about beta, beta is a relative measure of risk indicating the fluctuation in assets as compared to the market. So till now we looked at standard deviation as a measure to calculate risk but what standard deviation was uh, what uh, standard deviation was illustrating was the individual risk, the risk involved in that asset, whereas beta would tell you the relative risk, the risk involved in your asset and its fluctuation as compared to the market risk. So if the beta would be equal to 1, it would indicate that your asset in which you invested, the price would move with the market. It is going in relation with the market, whereas if it would be less than 1, it would indicate that the asset is less volatile than the market and if the beta value would be more than 1 it would indicate that the asset is more volatile than the market which means uh, if the market is moving up so your beta value is more than 1 so with 1% change in market it would change higher than that 1% Example, if beta value is 1.3, what does it mean? It means that the asset in which you invested would move 30% more than the market movement. And if the beta value is 0.75, it means that the asset in which you invested would move 25% less than the market movement. So this is how the beta tries to uh, tries to measure the relative risk, the relative movement of the market and the asset, and thus provide you a better figure to to assess the risk involved in the asset in which you are investing. So we would look after these formula in Excel and try to calculate how it is used. So just understand this scenario. I have taken uh, five years period one, two, three, four, five and the return percent in which the asset in which you invested is 15, 12, 20 percent, 50 minus 15 percent and 18 percent. What we would try to figure out, we would try to get on to the standard deviation and the beta value. So first to uh, look at these formulas. We would calculate average return by total return by number of observation, the basic uh, formula for calculating averages. Then we would take deviation. Deviation would be return minus average return. We would see one by one how we would do that. Variance would be our sum of square deviation. Variance would be our sum of square deviation. And then standard deviation would be the square root of variance. So, so stepwise we would come to the standard deviation and we would see how it is done. So let's get started with the deviation value. We have to calculate deviation by is equal to return minus average return. Okay, so we are not having average return. So first we would calculate the average return. Is equal to average brackets open. Now select all the return percent to get the average value, close the bracket, enter. 
So we got the average of 10. You can see we got the average of 10. Right? Now we would use this average return to calculate our deviations. Deviations would be return minus average return. So one by one we would uh, be deducting the average return out of our return percent. So is equal to return percent minus the average return. Enter. So we got here 5. Now we would uh, copy this formula. Before copying we would uh, log this with the dollar sign so that it remains same. The average return remains same in all the columns, all the rows. So yeah, now we can copy down this formula. And we got our values. The second step is we have to calculate the square of these deviations. So we would just do the square of these deviations which we calculated is equal to deviation square. And we got here 25. In the same way we would copy the formula and see the squares of all. Thus we got the square of all the deviations. Now we know that to calculate variance we have to take the sum of all these square deviations. So we would use the sum formula and we would calculate the sum of all these square deviations. Brackets close. And we got 818 as the sum of our square deviation. So what would be our variance? Our variance would be sum of square deviation divided by n minus 1. N is here number of observations. So we are having 5 time period for 5 years. So we would do 5 minus 1 that is 4. So just put plug in the values is equal to square deviations sum divided by 4. And enter. This is what we got as variance. Now we know that standard deviation is the square root of variance. So how to calculate standard deviation? We would just do the square root. So use the formula square root function sqrt brackets open and select the value the variance value brackets close enter. So yeah here you got the standard deviation of 14.30. Let me change the font color so that you can visualize which the standard deviation is. So 14.30 this is the standard deviation we calculated. So just uh, suppose the asset in which we invested was giving these all return percent. For first year it was giving 15%, for second 12%, for third year 20% and then to fourth year it was moving down, it was going negative and giving us a loss of 15%. So we were trying to calculate how much risk is involved in this asset so that whether we should move on to invest in this asset or not. So what we did, we calculated the standard deviation. This standard deviation is showing 14.30. So this is the volatility range. It the asset could, the asset is volatile. It could move, uh, it could move, it could deviate from the average return this much. Now coming to the beta value. Let's see how to calculate the beta value. So whenever you are calculating beta we observe that it is a relative risk so we would take a return percent from one market and return percent from the world market considering world as the market and India as an asset so just you can make a comparison between any of the asset and the market here di is representing the deviation we would first calculate the deviation for our country that is India and then we would calculate the deviation from the world market so first we would get on the average of both is equal to average brackets open select all the numbers brackets close enter so we got the average of 10 as we calculated previously also and for world market again we would calculate the average brackets open select all the averages brackets close and we got the average of 16 so let's see if we, we have to find the deviation. We would first find the deviation for Indian market. DI here is representing the deviations for Indian market. So how we calculated the deviation? We calculated deviation by deducting average return from the return. So is equal to return percent minus the average return. Enter. 
and we would copy this formula down by locking our average return. Okay, we would just copy this formula. Yeah, we got the result. Now we would do the same procedure for the world market. We would try to calculate the deviations for world market. So is equal to return minus the average return and enter. Yeah, we would try to copy down this formula. So we got uh, the deviations also. Now we have to take the product of both these deviations, the deviations for the Indian market, the deviation for the world market. Here, what we are representing as India and world, we can represent as the individual asset and the market risk. So both the things could be used. Here we have to take the product. So we would do is equal to, and we would take the product of both DI in DW, and we would just scroll it down to get all the values. Yeah, so we got the values. Now we have to take the variance for the world deviation for the world market. So what, what we would do, we would do the square of the deviations to get the variance for the world market. So we just is equal to, we would take the square of the world market. and we would call it down to get all the values. Yeah, so this is what we got. And now just see what was the formula to calculate beta. The formula to calculate beta is covariance divided by variance of world market. So we got the variance of world market. We have to take the summation. And the covariance, and the covariance would be the summation of the product which we calculated divided by n minus 1 again the number of observations minus 1. So we would just plug in the values and we would try to uh, come out with the beta value. So just take the sum over here because we need the sum to get the variance of world market. Yeah, so we got the variance of world market. The second thing what we want is the covariance and covariance is the would be the summation of this uh, product which we calculated of both the markets, the Indian and the world market divided by the number of observations minus one. So first we would take out the sum of this also. And we would divide this by n minus 1 that is 5 minus 1 4 so we would simply plug in the values and check out the result yeah so this is our covariance 50.5 let me change the font color 50.5 is our covariance and 82 is our variance of world market so we would plug these two values to get the beta value. So let's see what is the beta value is equal to covariance that is 50.5 divided by the variance of world market that is 82 and enter. Yeah, so we got the beta value as 0 0.6158. This is our beta value. So we calculated beta and we got 0 0.61. What does this indicate? It indicates that with 1% with the 1% change in the market, the our the asset in which we invested would be less volatile and it would change by 0.61. So I hope you understood how to calculate standard deviation and beta. If you want to use Excel function, you can use the Excel function also to check out. So just to see standard deviation. Use standard deviation SDDEV point S and then plug in all the values. Brackets close, enter. So you can see here by using a simple function of Excel also we can calculate. But I 
what i did i showed you the steps to calculate so that if you have to do it manually also you can do and you can uh, clear on with your exams but if you have to use the function in excel you can simply use the standard deviation function or the beta function i hope you understand the concept of standard deviation and beta and how it is how it indicates the risk involved it indicates the risk involved in any asset in which you are investing so you can consider that before investing into the asset i hope you understand both the methods thank you for watching do like and share my videos subscribe to my channel dev take finance thank you all